Hello everybody, so welcome to the first of these vlogs where I document my fiance visiting me in the UK uh, and this first vlog is going to cover us being in Berkshire, in Newbury and Farnborough mostly and also a small village called Bucklebury. So the first place we stopped was this place called Windsor which is a really fancy place. Uh, it has a famous castle there, I believe a castle that like the royal family still uses and lives in uh, and basically we just went there to go and have a picnic. These egg and press sandwiches the egg is ever. And while we were eating our food, we were able to sit with a view of the castle. It's kind of up on a hill. And the whole thing was really picturesque, uh, really nice looking, really good way to kind of start the trip. No, it isn't. After the picnic, we went for a walk along the river. Uh, and it was nice to stretch our legs having driven for a while and obviously Hannah had been on the plane for ages So yeah, it was a nice walk very pretty lots of uh, scenic views of uh, different fancy looking buildings uh, lots of nice wildlife yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum, yum. There was a cool looking big monument plane thing that we saw Are you taking a picture or a video? It's a video. Okay. <laughs> There's the church there on the right, and then that thing looks like a kind of abbey. It's really fascinating. Uh, and there was even some history to kind of pick up from looking around, which is fun. 800th anniversary. Say thank you next to your favourite clause of the Magna Carta. Uh, no free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights. Yeah. Rub it for luck. Anyway, after that, the next place we headed to was a village called Bucklebury, and that's actually where my granddad, who is in his 90s, was born and raised. Well, this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely, Bucklebury. I'm gonna go stretch my legs. So it's where we decided to have this kind of big family get together. <laughs> How far are you going back, Mac? Yeah. This is the dinosaurs. When everyone was there, my granddad started giving a little talk uh, about the village and the village's history and his history in the village. It was kind of autobiographical. This row of cottages here is uh, in the right-hand one only, with the two rivers you see there, I think, where I was born. You know. July the 6th, 1930. Well, the house, the house may have been slightly modified. Oh, yes. Uh, July the 6th, 1930. One of the places he mentioned was this old village church, which seemed to still be in use, even though we couldn't get into it. But I was able to uh, stick my camera through the window so we could see it. Well, I can try. Well, you're as tall as Through the window? Yes. Uh, yeah, it seems to still function at least in some way. I'm not sure if it's still used as a church or just a generic community centre. It's kind of surprising that it hadn't been uh, renovated into residential accommodation. Yeah, it's surprising this place hasn't been like grand designs yeah. or something. You would think like... Maybe it's because it's historical, you're not allowed to. Like there are certain rules about that. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll come over and... All right, great. Let's do it in. Let's hang out in the den. Uh, uh. Fat booty. Hey I might zoom in at all. New house for. Oh. Oh. There we go. Look, it's. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't look as. I mean. It looks kind of spacious. Yeah. Not bad. It's just a bit it's difficult cozy. to get into it. This is. My granddad's old house. Mm -hmm. He was born here. In 1930. In this teepee. Oh, I was just telling me to. Um, Richard, you knew that Grandma Macadie used to come round the common and take the fur cones and I think wood as well, so I'm not sure about that. Because every year, because that where the common is right, and if you didn't use oh, it, right. yeah, the, the, right the right would disappear That's because right. they yeah. lived on the common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the Ardennes offensive occurred in, the, in the December 1944, a lot of the 
American uh, military vehicles were captured by the Nazis and that area was cleared of about half of the vehicles parked there to replace the ones that were lost. Wow! I'm really high. We're in a tree. I'm in a tree. Whoa! Whoa! But the question is, why don't we climb up even higher? Um, oh, there's a, there's a kite! I think that might be a red kite. So, it's where we are. It's how far down. It's how far down. <laughs> Whoa! And... How far we have to go? Are we really doing no. Okay, so something I really neglected in filming this vlog is uh, anything in the evenings to bookend the days. So it just ends up looking like constant daylight because I'm very rarely filming in the evenings. And one of the reasons for that is in the evenings we're kind of all hanging out as a family uh, and you know I just don't want to film people as much. But basically, we went to Pizza Express at the end of the day. Uh, we hung out there. Hannah was very tired, obviously, because of jet lag and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, we ate food, enjoyed it. We were staying at a hotel in Newbury, and yeah, we did relax, did just kind of watch some TV and chill. And like I say, it might have been nice to film it, just so uh, the uh, the actual stuff we filmed wasn't just constant action, action, action. We did have some downtime, but uh, a lot of the time when it was just downtime, I didn't think to film it. So therefore, the next thing you're going to see is just the morning where we started the next day. And the plan for the next day is that we were heading to the Farnborough Air Museum. Uh, and that was where we're basically going to be spending almost the entirety of the day. Apart from that, the plan after that was to head to uh, either Old Bucklebury or regular Bucklebury. There are two of them. But yeah, the big thing that was happening in that day is going to Farnborough, which is uh, another place. I think that's actually not in Berkshire. I think it's in Hampshire. Uh, and yeah, to check out the Air Museum. As an aviation museum, it did just have like a lot of uh, random planes and helicopters. I don't know if there was any particular like theme to the stuff because that was just like a place kind of round the back of the main museum where they just had all of this stuff on display. Testing in progress. Hey Hannah. Give it a boot. Oh. Whoa, so many planes. Okay, everybody, I'm going to slightly break the rules by going in here, even though we're technically supposed to wait until we have somebody with us. Okay, I'm now in the cockpit. And a lot of it was kind of like 1980s stuff, uh, so not very early aviation. Um, and they had all sorts of, you know, like, I don't really know all the terms for it, but I think like Harriers. And boom. Now, oh dear. Would you like to get in? Real quick. Be careful. Smile. Okay. This is very tiny. Does it hurt your back? Good. It's a little like bumpy. Would you like to be in there going hundreds of miles an hour? No. In the sky with people shooting <laughs> at you? No. I'm so scary. So just for the record, this is a Harrier jet which is capable of taking off vertically. And as we established, the Americans bought all of them and still use them to this day, even though they were invented by the British. Anyway. Right, and we're technically also, I don't know if I mentioned this, breaking the rules here because we should be waiting for someone to come with us, but I think we've established a sufficient rapport that they're okay with it. Okay. And we got away with it. Frankly, it makes sense we would have got away with it because we spent ages waiting for someone to appear and no one appeared, but logic would suggest that perhaps having waited for somebody to appear for ages, as soon as we got in it, someone would have appeared. There was one helicopter which was like the only helicopter in, in, I don't know if it was the only helicopter in the world or the first helicopter or just, you know, like a uniquely mass produced helicopter but that could do a loop de loop. Yeah, we learned a little bit about aeroplanes and how they work, uh, which was fun. And we spoke to this one guy who was really informative and taught us a lot 
and I filmed him uh, quite a bit. Two big white buildings in the background are sound stages for making blockbuster films. Oh, yeah. really? That is interesting. Yeah, guy Richie was here the other week. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Why you would build a sound stage next to a noisy airport? I don't yeah, know. yeah, that is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, that is a bit strange. The big grey building there with the clock on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is one of the famous Farnborough wind tunnels. But if you want to find out how something performs in a wind Wasp, yeah, I think so. This is a drone detector. Admittedly, I felt uncomfortable. You know, this is my first time doing any kind of vlogging, so I wasn't really sure how um, appropriate it would be to just start filming somebody. And I was a little bit too socially awkward to just ask, so I decided to do the far more awkward thing of just um, acting as if I was filming stuff while they were talking and then just slowly directing my camera towards him as he was talking uh, just to like ease into the idea of filming him. So rather than just taking out my camera and just like, oh, I'm just going to film you. I was just like filming random stuff while he was talking and I just like casually was like, oh, oh, you're talking? Oh, look, I, I'm filming you. Which, you know, I don't know. Was that more awkward? Maybe. One of the things that the guide explained to us is the purpose of these pointy things on the front of planes and we saw them and some of them were very pointy and we were thinking, like, I don't know, it looks as if they were like to spear people or something or maybe they were just an aesthetic thing. It turns out actually uh, they are there so that uh, the air can kind of go into them and basically the faster the plane is going the uh, more uh, kind of like the pressure there is as it's like as the air is going into the thing and basically it's a speedometer. Which is kind of a boring answer. I thought it was going to be that that's that they fired guns, like it was just a big gun barrel, but no. It was also right next to an airport that was used for private jets. That's a new new outfit there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been open about two years. Ah. They have Gulfstream aircraft business jets coming in from all over Europe to be ah. maintained there. So I tried to get footage of that and uh, I couldn't. Well, if there were a plane taking off. All right, let's go into the museum. Building here didn't take into account the fact that you can't see down the runway. In fact, I think somebody had given me directions and I'd not quite followed those directions correctly. Um, so, you know, that's, I guess, I'm the only one to blame there. <laughs> taken a few of them landing but not taking off. We also just had lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a charcuterie board with some hummus. Well, and um, sandwiches. Sandwiches, um, pork pies, um, and um, fruit. Grapes. Crisps. Snacky stuff. And then there was um, pudding. And that was, I had Dessert. cake. What did you have? I had some chocolate nests. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And so that's the thing in the yeah, UK. Um, for Easter, you know, like obviously you got the Easter eggs, which are chocolate, but we also have the nests made out of chocolate. And often you have like, so the nests are kind of like made out of um, like cereal, like shaped into a nest with melted chocolate. And you have like little chocolate eggs in it. Anyway, I just like, how can they all be landing but not taking off? to establish the idea of playing frisbee. Oh dear. Oh, POV. Got it. Ah. Nice. Uh, uh, and so on. So I should explain in more detail that the reason we actually went to the aviation museum is because my granddad's sisters were killed in an air show crash in, uh, it was either 1954 or 1956. Uh, and it was at Farnborough, and basically somebody, who was also called Mike, uh, had organised a monument to the victims, or, or a memorial to the victims of the crash. So we had decided, as a family, to come together around my granddad and attend this memorial. And uh, unfortunately, because we were speaking to uh, a you know one of the guides, we ended up missing part of the memorial. We missed uh, him actually, my, my granddad giving a speech on the matter and we also missed him laying down uh, some flowers but we did get there and we saw some other people give speeches uh, and overall yeah it was 
clearly, I mean, I guess emotional, I would hope maybe cathartic for my granddad. Um, and yeah, that's basically the reason we come there. And of course, uh, it was very nice of the Farnborough Air Museum because they actually shouldn't have been open. They were like, oh, you know, we have this memorial thing. We would be happy to accommodate families of the people who were killed in the crash. So that was nice of them. But Hannah won't want to sit in the plane she's just been in. <laughs> that's true, yeah. No, I don't think oh, they I literally want. sat in there, Matt. I think these yeah. are the sort of seats. Yeah. yeah, these are the seats that you sit in if you come by Concord. Is it still working? No, 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 no,
footage of that. But obviously I guess the aeronautical principles involved were the same even if uh, it wasn't as much of a glamorous application of those principles. The reason it bends away is because uh, the pressure field created between the water as it comes down and it starts to move away makes it snap onto the surface to change direction. Uh, my granddad was actually part of the kind of, I guess, commission to work out where the yellow line at a train station should be placed. So obviously there's a line which tells you where you should stand and they were the people in charge of working out where that line should be. How close can you be to a train uh, before, you know, the kind of aeronautical forces of the train going past could present a danger to your health and your safety. So if you have a jet of air, it pulls in air alongside it. If you have a train going through a station... For it instance, pulls in like people. It, it, I mean, it, that's... It, yeah. 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 No, ideally but, not, but you know. That, that's because of what's called entrainment. Damn it, I have Christmas songs in my head. But it's Easter. One of the persons of interest at the museum was this guy called Samuel Cody, and he was a Wild West showman who stole the name, or maybe adopted the name, of Buffalo Bill, the famous, like, Wild West showman cowboy. He did his Wild West mm. shows, and he did a, a Victorian melodrama about the Klondike Nugget, about the gold rush. Yeah. Made out that he'd been there, but there's no evidence he'd ever been there. Oh, wow. <clears throat> he used to tell people he'd been born in Texas as well. Yeah. Because all good cowboys come from Texas. That's true. So, uh, yeah, he was a bit of a storyteller to say. That. That's interesting. Um, Once he moved to the UK, he found out that actually he was basically having some issues with kind of like copyright with the Buffalo Bill people. And they were like basically trying to sue him for you know, like, muscling in on their territory. So he decided to just move on to his second passion, which was uh, flying. And he pioneered uh, basically the idea of, like, manned kites, so you could, like, glide on flying kites. Uh, and he also flew the first ever aeroplane constructed in the UK. And for a while, the uh, the British government didn't take him very seriously because he was like pushing for this whole flying thing and they didn't really care until somebody, I can't remember who, uh, was the first person to fly a plane across the channel. And at that point they realized, oh, maybe this could actually be dangerous. We could get invaded. That's not very good. So yeah, he was um, like a big person who the museum focused on and that's because one of his kind of bases of operation was the museum, which, you know, makes sense. Oh, there he is. That's weird. There's a random guy making pots. Ended up getting a job with the army as a kiting instructor. Oh, wow. The reason why they moved here was because they wanted to fly these airships and there wasn't enough room two or three miles away over there. Mm -hmm. And somebody realised that there was a nice flat area out here where you could do things like that. And so they, they moved the whole lot, the balloon school, the balloon factory and everything to here. That's the framework of a balloon hanger, oh. dating pre-World War I as well. Um, it would have normally been covered with canvas material. Yeah. And then uh, Cody got involved with them with the airship, which they flew to London. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get it back because it was too windy. Mm -hmm. They built another one that was supposed to be better with it. It was worse than the first one. Oh, wow. And so they then decided to abandon the idea of airships. Cody uh, was sent to France to find an engine for the airship. Mm -hmm. What did he do about engines? Nobody knows. <laughs> um, but while he was there, he would have seen airplanes flying. What an elaborate flying contraption. <laughs> What we began to realize is that obviously there are many aviation museums in the world and I think the way that this museum had decided to set itself apart was by functioning as a museum specifically for dead test pilots because I already mentioned Samuel Cody and he died um, doing a, a test piloting thing. He you know, was flying a plane and it crashed and he died. Um, and indeed one of the big focuses of the museum was around 
the idea of being a test pilot, the risks that come with being a test pilot, and of course what ultimately test pilots contributed to aviation history, often at the cost of their own lives. Sadly, in 1968, a, an airplane at the Farnborough Air Show took off and lost engine power and crashed into it. No. So it was no more. Just how many test pilots were lost? Yeah. And at 10 points, it's like one a week. Blimey. They had a whole thing which was uh, like explaining parachutes and how parachutes save people's lives and which test pilots were able to successfully employ their parachutes and which test pilots were not so successfully able to. Is there any significance to the name Caterpillars or is that just kind of an arbitrary? There is. Oh. Uh, the parachute uh, was made of silk and ah. the Caterpillars had to climb out of their cocoons <laughs> they decided. Call it the Caterpillar Club. So wait, is these people who successfully... Um, successfully ejected. So that, then were they all basically alive after that? Yes. Okay, yeah, good. I just... Ah. Very good for them. And yeah, that did seem to be the focus of it, which, you know, kind of works with the fact that it now obviously also has a memorial to uh, people who died in an air show. Uh, and of course I imagine that uh, the pilot was killed in that air show too. So that kind of follows on the tradition of the risks associated with being a pilot um, and remembering the contributions that come by people taking that risk upon themselves. Oh. That was me after I had my, my chilies. <laughs> yeah, this, this one must have been quite frightening. This was at an yeah. air show in America. You can see the planes coming towards the crowd. Oh yeah, blame The pilots in the process of ejecting. Overall the museum was really interesting. It wasn't like totally kind of overburdening you with information. There was lots of stuff to see and kind of look at and interact with, uh, but there wasn't a sense of just like there being so much stuff that it would, you felt like so much pressure. There was quite a bit of technical stuff that accompanied a lot of the aeroplanes, like explaining all sorts of different things, like the types of engines they had and all that kind of stuff, uh, which wasn't really of interest to me because I wouldn't have really understood it, but obviously that would be available for somebody who's like totally into aviation and understands all of that stuff, that would have been really interesting too. So this is more kind of modern stuff compared to... Yeah, this is, this is the development of engine nozzles to reduce Oh, it, uh, so is there, um, I was told there was a kind of replica of the first Frank Whittle um, engine. In well, it. there is the actual, it's not a replica. It oh, it is the, the actual, yeah, I didn't see it, wait, yeah. So that's, those would have been pressurised, those canisters? Like, uh, f or what? Pass. I don't, I'm not an expert. Oh, okay, I don't know, yeah. That's fine. Courtesy of the Aviator Hotel, a portrait of Sir Frank Whittle oh. that they were about to throw in the rubbish skip. <laughs> Is that also him? That's also him, yeah, yeah. Wow. a few years later. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. And I think it was cool that they committed themselves to a particular narrative of the kind of experience of test pilots and like I say the risks associated with that uh, and that did make it more interesting uh, and of course the guides were really nice. It was really nice of them to make the kind of space available for us to even kind of have this memorial get together. Uh, nothing but nice things to say about the museum. And like I say, it was interesting. You happy with your Daisy Jane? I love it. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's a mini one. Do you want to go walkies? Okay. Okay. I need to finish my vlog. Uh -huh. Just regarding what we found out about the tree. What did you find out about so the what we found out about the tree is that because they were all talking about this this um, Cody's tree everywhere and it turns out so what he used to do is when he was testing kind of like the um, propulsion on his planes he would tie a um, a rope to the tree and then he'd have like a little spring connected to his plane and the uh, kind of you know spring would would measure the force of the pull the Newtons, and he would use that to kind of um, work out how strong the propulsion was for the propeller, and whether it was doing enough. Your window, so there's a ladybug. Ladybug. Wouldn't you say that's interesting, Hannah? Very interesting. I'm scared. Sorry, Mike, but it's just that there's a ladybug, and it's pretty cute. Sounds like a ladybird I could zoom in on a lot. Yeah, 
literally not moving. Oh, there it's moving. Oh, I'm so scared to squish it. Probably of some slave trader, am I right, ladies? Oh, probably. By the way, having now been able to pause the video and zoom and enhance that image, I can confirm that yes, this massive monument was of Wellington. It was a pretty huge monument to have just like in the middle of nowhere. Um, but yeah, I guess Wellington, an important guy. There was nothing to indicate this area was particularly special or anything like that, and then suddenly you just come across a random roundabout, and boom, massive pillar with a statue on top of it to one of the greatest generals in British history. <laughs> Why, is oh, it... you're on a... <laughs> Why is it so skinny? My bum can fit down it. All right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm too, Gosh, I'm too thick. Way! I was having a nap. That's actually quite fun. <laughs> now I just hold down the zoom as I spin around, thus creating the perfect. Oh, jeez! <laughs> I decided I don't really like spinning around. Yeah, I, I think you could get in. Oh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, you probably could. Getting out bits going to be the hard bit. You want to go down the slide? You want to go slide? It's a big slide. It's a bit high. You want to go? You want to go down the slide? Do you want to go down the slide? Maybe later. Do you want to go down the slide? Maybe later. I'll zoom in on pure cowardice. So after this, like I said, the plan was to go to Bucklebury, specifically to look at the cemetery where my granddad's sisters were buried. Yeah, so this probably explains why we're going here. I think this might be where some Maccabees are buried. Hey, I was like, got anything to say to my vlog? Um, hello. Good. This is really good. <laughs> hey, Ollie, got anything to say to my vlog? Uh, say like and subscribe. No. Uh, in subscribe now. In subscribe. <laughs> Should say. Have we got it right? Yes, Maccabee. Blah blah. Frederick George. Yeah. Maccabee. So uh, Edith Elizabeth. Maccabee, May Hutchins, and uh, Frederick George Maccabee. I was just going to explain about how the nativity and everything worked in here. We all listen. Really interested in hearing how the nativity and festival plays were performed here. Yes. Yes. But I might stop recording because I think it will be long. <laughs> so, Popper, I have an important follow-up question. Yes. You said that. This place was chosen to represent Europe in the best passion play of Europe. Did it win? No, I didn't say that. No. Did you not say that? No, no, I didn't say that. What I said was that Oberammergau in Austria yes. presents the best pa uh, passion play in Europe. And because the uh, plays here were so uh, highly regarded by the people who saw them, yes. Britain, uh, Britain's Oberammergau was the description given to this church. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. Oh, Eloise and I, great minds, great minds think incorrectly alike. So yeah, good. No, no, it's not. Well, I don't know that you said what we said. I think we all just, yeah. About, yeah, I can see what you meant and how I misunderstood it, but yeah. Britain's Omer Garawal. Omer Amagawi. Omer Garawal. Omer Amagawi. Omer Garawal. I'm not going to be able to remember the name of that place at all. For the record, it's East. It's Good Friday. Right now. So, Good Friday, the day that our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, um, died on the cross. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just um, doing a little Easter Friday vlog. You got anything to say for the Easter Friday vlog? Easter Friday? Well, Good Friday, I guess, yeah. It's good Friday. Yeah, I want to call it Easter Friday because that makes sense, but... Is it Friday today? Oh, wait, is it Thursday today? It's, it's, it's Thursday today. Uh, okay. I'll leave that clip. Okay. That's what I've got to say, it's Thursday, it's not Friday. <laughs> good contribution to the Easter Friday vlog. I think this... Today's actually called, I think, Passover Thursday because it's when they had the, the, the last Passover. Is there, are those the Ten Commandments? Oh. Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Are they? I can't read them. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. 
Thou shalt not steal. Probably. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, as you all know, the rule is whoever finds the person who died the youngest wins. Mm, yes. Um, 1988. 2014. Now these have got to be so old. 1819. Died 8th January 1799. Um, the Winchcombe family was the uh, famous family, but uh, Elizabeth I and other uh, monarchs visited here uh, at those times. Great church. Remember that church you went to in. Um, uh, oh, why does that count? Oh, only. Only, yeah. Okay. Look at the, look at the stained glass window. Absolutely phenomenal. Isn't it? Apparently, it's very famous. Hey, Dad. You got anything to, to say to the, the vlog? I'm mouthing it. <laughs> you can lip read. I'm a really big fan of masks. It's unusual to see Christ clean shaven, it says. Oh, and yeah. that says that there seem to be two criminals on either side facing him. Usually they are uh, in a straight line, all mm -hmm. facing out. This fly, this fly was created lifelike by painting on two sides of glass. So you get a stereo effect as a result of the painting on the two sides of glass. Oh, wow. Well, it's very realistic. Uh, and, and it looks totally realistic. Yeah. So across from the churchyard we saw some horses, they were very cute. Hey! How are you? Happy horsey? Happy horsey? <laughs> so cute. Ow ow! Nom nom nom! Oh! Other horsey's coming? No. And I was a little apprehensive about uh, touching them, Hannah was less so. Well, I just managed to miss you petting it. Way to go. Did you enjoy painting the horse? Yeah. Good. He was nice. Uh, I think I got some footage of us actually touching them. Here's a boy. I'm going to be cute with you behind, behind here. Maybe away from the... He knows that I'm here though. It's okay. Okay. Hello. Is your nose itchy? Itchy nose? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go on your way. Oh, that sounds like maybe an angry noise. Yeah. I'm not I'm not an expert with horses. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> tentatively get... <laughs> able to touch them. They get flies in their nose, so they do that. Okay. Well, we're friends. Oh All my right, lord. Buddy. Very close. Go. go find I mean, something cute. to eat, okay? I guess she likes. Uh, he, I think I've established it is. Likes attention. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I think that's enough horse. <laughs> Uh, also, at one point, it seemed as if the horse was planning on projectile pooping at us, which would have not been nice. I was gonna like spray poop. <laughs> yes. So, like I say, there are technically two Bucklebrys, and therefore uh, there was a family walk organised from the one Bucklebry where the churchyard was to the other Bucklebry where the pub was. Some people were driving, some people were walking. I was like, well, I fancy a walk, and that's because you know there's been plenty of driving around already. It was nice to go on a. A little bit of a walk, stretch the legs, get some exercise. So yes, uh, Hannah and I and some members of the family uh, went on this walk, and uh, it was it was fun. Get that on camera, Mike. I got it. Zoom in. But also, we saw donkeys. Uh, now, for some reason, I inexplicably did not film us actually touching the donkeys. I don't know why, because the donkeys I did not find intimidating, and I was perfectly content to just stroke them uh, like nobody's business, uh, because yeah, they, they were small and adorable. Oh, Brown donkey. So friendly. <laughs> so friendly. Well, I'm not surprised off that noise. She hasn't seen a donkey before. Not especially making that noise. 
And yeah, I don't know why I didn't film us actually giving them a stroke, but yeah, we saw the donkeys. Donkeys were very cute, and that was lovely. Uh, we also saw a deer. We saw all sorts of, you know, your standard things like squirrels and stuff like that. The deer literally shot across the road, uh, or the path, just like very fast, and the dog started chasing it, which was not great. But yeah, overall, still, nonetheless, um, a very enjoyable walk. Hey guys, welcome to Michael and Hannah Vlogs. <laughs> we, we, just hey had a, we just had a pub lunch, dinner, dinner, because it's, it's evening. By the way, I don't want to be mean to this pub um, because they were accommodating a pretty large group of people and maybe this was why the quality of the food was a bit disappointing, but the quality of the food was a bit disappointing. Uh, the chicken was very dry, very tough, and there was no sauce with it. Overall, uh, quite disappointing, especially seeing as I actually recently went to a pub and had the best chicken burger I've ever had. So uh, that's really got the fact this chicken burger was quite disappointing um, more uh, thoroughly on my mind. Now finally, having already seen quite a few animals on that day, we were told that there were goats. Goatsy! Wake up! Goatsy! Yeah. I was promised goats. You can't dance and stay up tight. It's a supernatural delight. Everybody's. There should be goats here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed our video, our first vlog of many. Um, it has been some time since I was last there, but those were really fun first few days. It was really exciting for me. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the rest of the vlogs we're going to be putting out from that trip when I was there in April. Um, and let me know in the comments below um, what you want to see from us and what you want to see from me. Um, I do want to put out my own content, but I'm not really sure what direction I should go in with that. So let me know what you want to see and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.